Well, good morning, and the Lord be with you. <laughs> Actually, I'm just going to hang on to that. Let's just, let's just do that. I'll hang on to it for a minute. It is lovely that we have this opportunity on this third Sunday of Advent to worship together. Whether we are at home or whether we are in person, we are coming together to offer our prayers and our praise to God. And so we begin with the candle lighting. Here. There we go. This third Sunday of Advent, we have lit the first two candles, one for hope and one for peace. Today we light the third candle, the candle of joy. This should be an easy one because joy is all around us, in the children, the lights, the music, the gathering together. But how often do we let our preparations or our memories push joy to the side? Joy is like an underground spring that wells up within us, but joy is also a choice, an attitude. Like a muscle, it needs to be exercised. So today we open ourselves to joy, trusting that God has already planted it in us. All we need to do is give it care and offer it to share. Together, loving God, we open ourselves to you, trusting that this is how you made us. You created us for joy-filled hearts and lives. Show us the creative power of hope. Teach us the peace that comes from justice. Fill us with the kind of joy that cannot be contained, but must be shared. Prepare our hearts to be transformed by you that we may walk in the light of Christ. Amen. Rejoice in God always, and again I say rejoice, for God has created you with the capacity for joy. Trust in God's goodwill for all creation and open yourself to God's gentle, transforming love. We will welcome new possibilities in our lives. We will offer ourselves to God's goodness. We will go forth in hope and peace and joy. Good morning, everybody. So today we're talking about joy, and nothing brings more joy than a toddler expressing themselves. So I sent a couple of videos to Lisa to put up on the screen, so I'll have her play the first one for you. itself back around but anyway you get the idea he's he's parked himself in our bedroom with the door closed with his rain boots on that's the best part right and i've filmed underneath the door as he's just given her so like you can't get much more joyful than that folks that's pretty that's pretty joyful um one thing that i saw on facebook um recently was um, Leanne Matthews, who works for the Diocese of Montreal, posted a question for everybody, and I thought I'd pose the same question for you. Because this year everything looks a little bit different, but Christmas isn't cancelled. So what, in what ways are you keeping your Christmas traditions alive? In what ways are you continuing your Christmas traditions? Baking? Baking? Putting up a tree? Family get together? Family, uh, uh, 
sending yearly Christmas letters or Christmas cards or updates to friends and family around the world. So for our family, every year, my cousin and I watch Garfield Christmas Special and Claymation Christmas on an old VHS tape that has all the old commercials on it, and we watch it all the way through. And last year, she got it digitized. Um, by the way, if you don't know this already, the St. Catharines Public Library has a machine that will convert your VHS tapes to DVDs, and it's free to use. So that was pretty great. Um, so this year, instead of us getting together to watch it, because we're not in each other's bubbles, we're going to set up a video call, and Arthur's going to watch it with us for the very first time. So that's going to bring us some joy. So I encourage you to think about creative ways to keep your traditions alive so that you can hold on to that joy of this season. Our families at home who have our ad Advent boxes are going to be making gingerbread cookies this week. So that takes that baking piece into account and the joy that comes along with getting your hands dirty and having yummy things and being together as a family. So to trumpet you into the rest of the week, here's Arthur Woods. <laughs> Pretty good air support. Has he, would he like to try a saxophone? <laughs> With that joy in our hearts, let us offer the prayer for today. Stir up the wills of all who look to you, Lord God, and strengthen our faith in your coming, that transformed by grace, we may walk in your way through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first reading, please. A reading from the book of Isaiah. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and release to the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to provide for those who mourn in Zion, to give them a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the mantle of praise instead of a faint spirit. They will be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord to display his glory. They shall build up the ancient ruins. They shall raise up the former devastations. They shall repair the ruined cities, the devastations of many generations. For I, the Lord, love justice. I hate robbery and wrongdoing. I will faithfully give them their recompense and I will make an everlasting covenant with them. Their descendants shall be known among the nations and their offspring among the peoples. All who see them shall acknowledge that they are a people whom the Lord has blessed. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My whole being shall exult in my God, for he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness as a bridegroom decks himself with a garland, and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the Lord brings forth its shoots, and as a garden causes what is sown in it to spring up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all the nations. 
The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm this morning is 126. When the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, we were then like those who dream. Then they said among the nations, the Lord has done great things for them. Restore our fortunes, O Lord, like the water courses in the Negev. Those who go out weeping, carrying the seed, will come again with joy, shouldering their sheaves. Praise to you, God, our salvation. Your generous gifts surpass all that we can ask or imagine. You have delivered us from the exile of sin and restored us to the new life in Jesus Christ, our Savior. Glory and honor and praise to you forever and ever. Amen. Our second reading, please. A reading from the first letter of Paul to the Thessalonians. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Do not quench the spirit, do not despise the word of prophets, but test everything. Hold fast to what is good. Abstain from every form of evil. May the God of peace himself sanctify you entirely, and may your spirit and soul and body be kept sound and blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful, and he will do this. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. There was a man sent from God, whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. And this is the testimony given by John when the Jews sent priests and the Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who are you? He confessed and did not deny it, but confessed, I am not the Messiah. And they asked him, What then? Are you Elijah? And he said, No, I'm not. Are you the prophet? And he answered, No. And then they said to him, Who are you? Let us have an answer for those who send us. What do you say about yourself? And he said, I am the voice of one crying out in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord, as the prophet Isaiah said. Now they had been sent from the Pharisees, and they asked him, Why then are you baptizing if you are neither the Messiah, nor Elijah, nor the prophet? And John answered them, I baptize with water. Among you stands one whom you do not know, the one who is coming after me. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandal. This took place in Bethany, across the Jordan, where John was baptizing. The Gospel of Christ. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Would you please be seated?
And keeping with our theme of joy, I'm putting my stole on early because it's one of the things that brings me joy, one of the things that we can do this Advent season. Not just because pink is kind of snazzy and we only get to wear it once a year, but this was a gift from a colleague, a dear friend of mine who died. Her husband passed along one of her sets of vestments for me to wear and, and he figured this was the kind of place that would appreciate the pink and the a little bit of pizzazz, and so I get to wear it and remember Anne every year, and so it brings me joy, so I've put it on a little earlier, and I'm hoping it's straight, because um, you can see it if it's not, so, but anyway, but as I said, it, it does offer a little bit of joy. We are in liturgical year B, which is a little bit of a challenge for preachers, because if you were here last Sunday or paying attention, we talked about John the Baptist last week. We heard from the Gospel of Mark about how he was standing out in the wilderness calling people back to repentance. We heard a preamble to that from Isaiah. So no, they didn't get it wrong and accidentally double up on the readings two weeks in a row. But that this is important enough for us to be paying attention to. And so we hear some of this two weeks in a row. So last week, as I said, we heard Mark's version of John standing in the wilderness calling people to repentance. Mentions he was dressed strange and he ate weird foods, but that he was drawing people to him and telling them they needed to repent and they needed to get ready. And there was the passage from Isaiah as well, the comfort my people. There is one coming in the wilderness who will um, raise up the low places, will lower the mountains, will kind of straighten the paths and make the way to prepare for the coming of the Lord. So we, we hear from Isaiah and we hear about John. And so this week, we hear from Isaiah and we hear about John. But it's a little different. Because again, it's a little different passage and it's a little different focus. And so I'm going to reread you a portion of that again. Because this week, Isaiah is once again still offering us some hope, still offering us some encouragement. And Isaiah begins, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and release to the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor, <clears throat> and the day of vengeance of our God, <clears throat> to comfort all who mourn, and to provide for those who mourn in Zion, to give them a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the mantle of praise instead of a faint spirit. Once again, Isaiah is giving us hope and encouragement about the one who is coming. Last week, he talked about the Messiah, the one who is being sent as someone who would companion us, who would be with us through those challenging times, would kind of raise up the valleys so that things weren't quite so hard, would flatten the mountains so things weren't quite so steep, would make crooked paths straight, and would be a companion through all of those challenges, those uncertainties of life. And that we wouldn't be alone in all of that. There was somebody who was coming who was going to make a real difference in our lives and was sent from God. And then we heard John telling us we needed to get ready. And so today, it kind of mirrors that. We hear again about the hope and the promise and the good news that is coming. You know, Isaiah proclaims all the wonderful things that are going to happen. We are going to find comfort in our mourning. We are going to find some joy through our sorrows. There is hope for people who are seeking justice. There will be justice for those who are weary. There will be comfort. Again, a wonderful promise of what is coming. A wonderful reminder that God is hearing our cries. God is hearing our pleas. God is seeing what is happening to us and knows what we need. And so offers somebody, offers us that kind of encouragement and that hope that there is some coming who will hear your cries, who will, who will help you find justice where there is none, who will help raise you up when you are feeling lonely and broken. And that, again, it's hope filled. And it's a reminder that God is hearing our concerns, is hearing our burdens, is hearing what is going on in our lives, and is sending somebody who is going to make a very real difference. The lovely thing is, and I'm jumping ahead, is that when Jesus begins his public ministry, he stands up in the temple, and this is the passage that he reads to kind of proclaim the beginning 
of his ministry. Because he reads this passage again and then says, today you, all of this has been accomplished in your hearing. This is an important passage. It is something, and for the, the Israelites who would have heard this, for the generations who would have heard this proclaimed, they knew that God was going to act. That God heard and understood what they were going through and that God was going to act and give them what they needed. And so again, in the gospel reading, we hear about John. John is coming. Um, John is being questioned by the Pharisees. This isn't the yelly, shouty John either. This isn't the, somebody who's yelling at everybody as they wander by in the desert. This is the John who people have noticed what he's doing. And so the Pharisees have sent people to question him. Are you the one that we are waiting for? Because again, he's telling people they need to repent. He's calling them back towards God. And he's telling them that they need to repent. And he's offering a baptism of water to kind of symbolize that turn in their journey, that repentance, that recommitting of themselves to their walk in faith. And so those aren't strange questions. Like, are you the one we're waiting for? And John tells them, no. And it's quite insistent because they try a couple of times. Like, are you the prophet? Are you Isaiah? Are you Elijah, I should say? Are you Elijah? Are you the, the Messiah? And John keeps saying no because his job isn't to be that person. His job is to get us ready for that person. And there is even more hope in this version of John, of talking to John the Baptist because he reminds them that Actually, the one that you're waiting for is here. You don't know it yet. You don't recognize him yet. But the time is at hand. So not only is John telling people they need to get ready, he's telling them they need to get ready now because it's close. This isn't one of the prophets who's proclaiming something that's going to happen generations down the road. John reminds, us, reminds them that the person you are waiting for is actually here. You don't know it yet, and you don't recognize him but you're getting close. The time that we have been waiting for and longing for and, and, and anticipating is getting close. And it's almost here, so you need to get ready. And so he's, he's answering those who are questioning them, and he continues to point beyond himself to something bigger and more wonderful. My job isn't to be that person. My job is to get you ready for that person. And that's kind of a strange and unusual thing, but he is so faithful in all of that. In each gospel reading, whether it's the John yelling at everybody, calling them a brood of vipers, or whether it's just the quiet version from Mark, everyone went to the river and whew, there he was. This John is reminding us that the time is very near. And so here we are hearing this, knowing that our time is very near too. There's three candles at a forelit on the altar, on the, on the um, advent wreath. We are getting very close. And in some ways, we feel we need to be getting close because this is a strange year and the news is not good and we're concerned about the numbers and we're concerned about what the things we're not going to be able to do. So it was a lovely reminder to focus on joy and to, to kind of be able to embrace the things that we can do. But we need to get ready because we are almost at Christmas. We are Almost next week we hear about Mary and the angel Gabriel. So we are getting very close to the next stage of the story. And so I think part of the reason why there are two weeks where we hear from Isaiah and we hear about John is that it's a reminder of the importance of our need to prepare our lives. We've been given the encouragement and the hope and the promise and the anticipation from Isaiah Wonderful things are coming when the Messiah comes. Wonderful things are coming because God is acting and reacting to what is going on in our lives. Wonderful things are coming, I'm promising you. And John is the one who is telling us that promise is almost fulfilled. So you need to get ready now. Not for someday, but you need to get ready now. Because when the Messiah comes, all those things that we have been longing for, all those things that we have been searching and hungering for are coming true, and so you need to get ready. And it's no secret that how we're getting ready this year looks different, but we are getting ready. We've decorated the church. You've been given some materials to do an Advent journey at home, and, and everyone's journey looks different this year. We're not doing something together in some sort of study or lesson. Everyone's journey is a little bit different, but we are all aiming and focusing on the same thing. 
we are all getting ready for the birth of the Christ child, for the embodiment of God's gift of love to the world, of somebody who brings hope when we are feeling discouraged, of somebody who represents the peace that we hunger for in our hearts, for somebody who represents how much we are loved by God. And that's pretty amazing. And that's why I think the one, this, and it's lovely that this is the year that we get the double dose of John and Isaiah, John the Baptist and Isaiah. Because I think this more than any year is a year we need to remind that there is good things that comes in the person of Jesus. And that no matter what's going on in the world around us, COVID, not COVID, orange stage, red stage, lockdown, whatever they're talking about next, in some ways none of that matters because we have the good news coming in the birth of the baby. We have the hope that comes into the world in the embodiment of Jesus. And so whatever our preparations look like this year, we need to keep at it because there is a light at the end of the tunnel. There is hope in the darkness. There is a brightness and a longing and a love that comes in the person of Jesus. And so like John says, we need to get ready because the one that you don't recognize is already here. The one that you're looking for is already coming. I am getting you ready for that. And Isaiah gives us again, again this week, reminds us of the hope and the good news and the promise that comes in this person. And so as the news continues this week, we'll find out whether we're actually, what we're going to be able to do around Christmas with a small group of family or friends, whether we're going to be able to gather, how big a group we're going to be able to gather, whether we can sneak another week out in, in orange or whether we go to red for Christmas. Who knows? Because the reality is, is whether we're at home, whether we're here in person, whether we're able to go outside and gather the way we always have, the truth of the matter is, is the baby is coming. The Messiah, the birth of the Messiah is coming. And so we get our hearts and our lives ready for that. We get our heart focused on the way that God loves us and the way God proves of how much we are loved. We focus our hearts and our minds on the hope and the promise and what all the prophets foretold about the one who is coming and what is going to happen when that one comes. We focus on that. We get our hearts ready to receive that good news. We get our hearts ready to receive that hope and that love and that joy that we can experience some of that peace. And we're reminded that even in the midst of our darkness, even in the midst of our valleys and our hills and our crooked paths, there is somebody who is coming who is going to make a difference, who is going to companion us through that, is going to love us through that, is going to encourage us through all of that. And we hold on to that with both hands because that is the good news that we're getting ready for. That is the hope that we are getting ready to to recognize and to celebrate in the world. That is the gift of love that God is offering to us. And so we still have time to get ready. There is still time to, to kind of to, to, to hear those readings again, to, to say those prayers, to open our hearts, to recognize where God is at work. There is still time for us to continue that, that preparation, to get ready, because something wonderful is happening, something amazing is coming into the world in the person of Jesus. And that we have that reminder that it is worth the effort and the time. It is worth the intentionality that we put towards that internal preparation. And what we get out of it is so wonderful because we have that hope. We have that encouragement. We have that comfort. And most importantly, we have that love, that tangible sign of how much we are loved. And so we need to keep getting ready. We need to keep turning our hearts back to God. We need to keep preparing our lives and re-examining who we are and who God is calling us to be because something absolutely wonderful and amazing is coming in the birth of Messiah. And we still have time to get ready for it. We still have time to prepare for it. And these readings remind us of what it is that we're getting ready for, of what it is that we are, are longing for and what is coming and what we are getting our hearts and our lives ready for because it is truly a gift. It is worth the effort and the energy and the intention and the preparation to be able to receive that gift of love, to be able to receive that hope and that promise and have everything that the prophets had proclaimed for so many generations finally fulfilled in the birth of a baby in Bethlehem. Amen.
I invite you to stand as you are able. And together we will stand and make our affirmation of faith. I believe in God, creator of the universe, dwelling forever beyond time and space. I believe in Jesus Christ, who came to live among us and let us see what God is like. I believe in the Holy Spirit, sent by God through Jesus to be our guide and our comforter. Therefore, I believe in love, in hope, compassion, joy, and faith, forgiveness, and eternal life. Amen. Our prayers of the people. God of power and might, shine your radiance and come quickly to this weary world. Hear our prayers for everyone in need. God of preachers and messengers, you have entrusted your church with the work of proclaiming good news. Strengthen the witness of bishops, pastors, deacons, church musicians, lay readers, and all people who contribute their prayers and talents to public worship. Embed your word in their hearts. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. God of every living creature, you announce the year of your favor for all of creation. Extend your kindness and relief to endangered animals and plants. Strengthen the human beings who rely on the rhythms of nature to make their living. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy. God of all peoples and nations, you plant us as your oaks of righteousness and ask us to care for one another. Be present with the leaders of every nation as they govern. Give them the spirit of righteousness that your goodness and mercy is revealed through their actions. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. God of exiles and wanderers, you repair what was once destroyed. We pray for people who have been displaced from their homes by fire, flood, earthquake, or storm. Support the work of Lutheran World Relief, Primates World Relief, and Development Fund, and all disaster relief organizations in their recovery efforts. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of the powerful and helpless, you clothe us with strength when our spirits are weak and weary. Bestow your spirit upon this congregation and empower us to comfort the people who turn to us in times of need. Make your church a place of refuge and healing. Hear us, O oh God. God of sinners and saints, you offer joy even in the midst of our grief. We are grateful for the beloved and perfect people whose lives testify to your radiant love. O anoint all who mourn with the oil of gladness. Hear us, O oh God. Draw near to us, O oh God, and receive our prayers for our sake, for your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
O Trinity of love, one God in perfect community, look now on us who look to you and hear our prayer for our community. Where there is falseness, smother it by your truth. Where there is any coldness, kindle the flame of your love. Where there is joy and hope, free us to share it together and make us one. Before God and you who are near me, we release anything we hold against one another. We regret all the harm we have done. We stand beside the wrong in our lives and we ask for God's forgiveness. God forgives us. Forgive yourself, forgive others, and be at peace. Amen. Dear friends, in Christ, may the peace of the Lord be always with you. Peace. Peace. Please join with me as we offer the prayer over the gifts. Savior of the nations, come. Make your home here in us. Feed us with your love, that our faith shine forever new and our lives reveal your light. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us open our hearts. Let us give thanks to the Holy One, our God. Great Deliverer, how wondrous are your deeds. You created the world and all that is in it. With a mighty arm you parted the waters and led your people to liberation. When we were in exile, you gathered us up in your bosom and led us home like a mother sheep. When we were mistreating our own, you sent prophets to set us right. You pulled down the arrogant and lifted up the weak. And when the time was right, you sent Jesus to set us free. 
Now send us again your life-giving spirit and recharge your promise within us, for we eagerly await our Savior to come again from heaven. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. So with gratitude and expectation, we remember that Jesus took bread, blessed, broke, and gave it to his disciples, saying, this is my body given for you. So we also remember that Jesus took the cup, saying, This is the new covenant of love and grace poured out for you and for many. Do this in remembrance of me. Now as we wait for him to come again, O God, stir up your power and restore us by sending your Holy Spirit to infuse us with hope in the great mystery of our faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. All glory and honor are yours, eternal Father, through Christ, with Christ, in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. As our Savior taught us, let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Look, the body of Christ is broken for the life of the world. The gifts of God for the people of God. I'm going to invite this side of the church to come forward first, followed by this side to receive communion.
Join with me as we offer the prayer after communion. God, for whom we wait, you come to us in the broken bread and the cup we share. Make us ready always to welcome Christ into our hearts and send us forth to be your people in the world, announcing your coming among us in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation, in the church and in Christ Jesus, forever and ever. Amen. Go out into the world rejoicing. Meet your creator who awaits you there. Delight in the richness and diversity of the world Christ died to save. And the power, live in the power of the spirit that renews all things. And the blessing of the creator God, the eternal father, the risen son, and the promised Holy Spirit bless you that you might be a blessing to others today and always. Amen. Just a couple of announcements, and it feels like things are going back to normal because there's probably four or five of them this morning, so get comfy. <laughs> um, just a reminder that um, our parish Christmas take-home ham and sculpt potato dinner is next Saturday, and we are getting very close to capacity. Um, I'm not sure how many tickets are left. I don't know if Joe's got a number, but we are down to the wire. So if you haven't reserved your tickets yet or would still like to, talk to Joe as you're leaving. I think we're down to the last 12 or 15. So we're almost at capacity. And so you'll be able to come and pick up a hot dinner that you can go home and enjoy. And you'll have a Christmas play um, video as well. So it's dinner and a show that we're doing this year. So there still is time to pick that up, um, to get the link for the, the special video and to be a part of that. And so the pickup is between four and six this coming Saturday. So there's still a chance, there's still a few spots left, but as I said, you need to kind of speak up sooner rather than later to claim one of those last spots. So that's great. There is still time, if you have not um, put a, a money or a, made a memorial donation towards flowers at Christmas, there is still time to do that. We kind of need to know by about Wednesday. So there is envelopes at the back. You can call and leave a message for Nicole. Um, but as I said, we kind of need that information by about um, by Wednesday to be able to do that. Every year we offer a blue Christmas service and this year kind of almost more so than ever. And so it's gonna be done one of two ways. We are having an in-person worship service on this Thursday night at seven o'clock. So you can come and be a part of that service in person. Um, you will need to pre-register, so you can do that through the link that was in the email, the Church Life email, or you can call Nicole on Tuesday morning to do that. Knowing, too, that not everyone likes driving in the dark and not everyone is quite feeling comfortable coming into public gatherings right now, I am going to pre-record a portion of that service. And so it will also go up on Thursday night so that if you aren't able to meet us in person, that that is still those prayers, that, that liturgy of remembering, that ritual is still available for you to do at home. So there will be a link on the website for that information. But as I said, that video will be shared. So if you're not able to join us in person, you will be able to do that at home when you need those few minutes to offer that. Or as I said, you can come and join us in person on Thursday night. So that's coming up. Oh, the little little blurb about the gift for a friend. So when you pick up some of your stuff or you can add some chili sauce to your, to your dinner as well, there is still a little bit of that left over. You can talk to Gail about that or contact her at home and there's her number. There's still a few things. They are going, but there still are a few. So if you're looking for a lovely little gift to be able to offer somebody, that is still available. There was a beautiful and wonderful response from the parish to support our family from community care. Um, they picked up their gift this week 
and we're quite humble. It's a single mom with five kids who was able to provide a Christmas in a tough year and even Maxine at Community Care said she got emotional being able to offer that and to support that family. Um, she was just so grateful. We got a beautiful little thank you note from her from the family about how much, how touched they were that somebody cared that they had a Christmas this year and how much that meant to them that there was that kindness extended in a year that they were having a, a hard time. So thank you again to everybody who supported that. The great holiday food drive, which is normally us taking stuff to fill a bus. Um, this year, the bus came to us. And so as of kind of Friday night, more than $492,000 worth of money and food had been donated. That is a phenomenal amount. And a lot of those bins were being um, left in place over the weekend. You could continue to go online and to make a donation towards that. But I think community care was quite blown away by the fact that even in these kind of difficult times, people still kind of stepped up and went above and beyond to find a way to support the work that community care is doing, which is so important um, given that the, the, the number of clients who are needing that support is growing. And so they were just so overwhelmed. And that's not even the final total. That was just where they were about 6.30 on Friday night. So we'll have to kind of wait and see how that campaign. But so to thank you to everybody who not only supported community care on the big food drive on Friday, but who brings stuff in every week to make sure that families in our community have what they need. Um, and that's going to continue to be important as we move forward to kind of be able to maintain that support and to be able to continue to offer that support. So thank you to everybody who participated so fully in that and who is helping, as I said, to make a difference to some of our friends and neighbors in our community. So thank you again, and we'll have to watch to see where that um, has ended. Is there anything? Oh, Christmas services. We sent out a survey, kind of the end of November, what do you think you need to do for Christmas? We had a wonderful response, but that is not your registration for Christmas. So if you are feeling you would like to come and worship with us in person, there is a link in the email. You can call Nicole. We have several services on um, Christmas Eve. Um, we have a Christmas Day service. Um, you need to be able to do that ahead of time. And so please make sure, if you gave us your preference in, in the survey, that's fantastic. That is not your registration. Um, I also know that some, I think some folks are kind of holding back and waiting to see what happens. Um, I think it's our understanding that we are likely going to be put into the red stage before Christmas, and so that may impact how people feel comfortable. We will also be sending you information. We will be doing per services in person. We will also have a live stream service and there will also be a pre-recorded video as well to be able to use. So we will send all of that information out so you know all your options to be able to celebrate Christmas, to celebrate the birth of our Savior, and for us to be able to do that as a parish family. We have lots of ways to be able to do that this year. So uh, you need to register ahead of time for Christmas Eve. There are several service times. There is also our usual service on Christmas Day. And so, as I said, give Nicole a call when she's in the office or the links for that were in the Parish Life email that went out this week for, to be able to do that. We've got it set up so that you can register for any or all of what you need to do over the next little while. Or as I said, the other thing you could do is call Nicole because she'll help you out. She'll get you straightened around. So that's perfect. So is that all the announcements I said I wanted to make this morning? Excellent. I'm just going to pop on just quickly just to get you excited for the, the Christmas play and to continue with the theme of joy. I have been sent contributions for this play from children from all over the diocese. And oh my goodness, is it filling my heart because they're all dressed up for Christmas Eve as they're doing their little parts. So look forward to that. If you aren't purchasing a Christmas takeout dinner but still want to watch the video, it will be available on Christmas Eve. So that's another option for Christmas Eve. Is it sort of a family, it can be a replacement for a family service. So there'll be um, prayers of the people at the end. The bishop is offering a blessing. Um, and uh, we had fun recording a little segment with her this past week. So. It'll be great, and I hope that you enjoy it. Excellent. Excellent. The last thing is, as you are leaving this morning, as was mentioned, we are likely going to be going into stage red, the red stage, as of next week. So when all of this hit back in March, the House of Bishops says, shut it down. And we did. 
Um, now that we're kind of partially open, um, some of this is being left up to us. We've been given some parameters about when your church is in the, the region you're in is in stage red, here are the parameters. But in person worship, we have some ability to make our own decision about. And so kind of as you're leaving, we're doing a little bit of an informal survey. If we shift to, to the red stage, would you still feel comfortable coming to in-person worship? A yes, no, um, I think it was about 50-50 at 8 o'clock. But as I said, we're, it's just kind of an informal survey to give the wardens and I some advice and some feedback. So when the time comes, we shift into stage red. What is your preference? Do you feel like you still want to come and worship in person with, of course, all the precautions still being taken? Or do you think when it comes to red, we're going to just stay home and be safe? So as I said, just give me a little heads up at the door. We're just kind of getting some information. The other regions that have gone into red stage already, it's about 50-50 whether people are staying open or closed, and each church has made their own decision for their own reasons. So we're given some discretion, and so we kind of need, need your feedback and how you, you're going to feel about when, when, this, when the region of Niagara goes into stage red. Are you going to feel comfortable doing this, or do you think we need to, to stop? So just kind of give me a little yay or nay as we head out the door. And again, I'm not taking names. It's not a naughty and, lit, naughty and nice list for Santa or anything like that, but just what are you going to feel comfortable doing? And it's really important. There is no right answer, but what kind of right now with two minutes to think before I stop rambling and you can leave, um, what do you think we need to do and how was the best way for us to respond and what are you going to feel comfortable doing? So just a quick little survey as you leave. So I think that's more than enough talking for me this morning. So... Um, thank you again for worshiping with us, whether at home or here in person. And as I said, we have this wonderful opportunity to continue to prepare, to continue to get ready for Christmas and the, uh, the coming of the Christ child. And I'm going to invite this side to leave first when the time comes, followed by the other side of the church. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord.